The fact that it was a comedy, number one, I really like watching comedies and I'm always putting a lot of comedy in my films and often it gets taken out because the films are supposed to be serious and to do a sci-fi comedy in outer space makes me happy. Most sci-fi comedies, if they're done well, you can watch them 20, 30 times over and they become funnier the more you watch them and I like that type of thing, kind of like Red Dwarf or uh, you know other TV shows like that or you know films that have a lot of comedy, even like Firefly, you know, always had those comedy moments in it. And it was, it was good. Ultimately, I, I saw Nobility as something that would please the audience and make people happy. Blending the, the drama and the comedy together, if it's done well, it works really well. And you can see that in, in movies like Galaxy Quest, which even though it was a comedy, it was still played as a serious film. And you watch it, it's got a great logic. Films like Bridesmaids, for example, uh, still had their logic to them and still had a real world situation, you know. And that's what I like when comedies are good and they're not just being played for slapstick. There's a story there that really engages the characters and, and the viewers as well. And I, I find that I find that type of comedy much more interesting. At the age of two I was watching Neil Armstrong walk on the moon and he was on television. And my dad took me outside and said, that guy on TV is on the moon up there. It was in England at night time. I couldn't understand how the guy on TV could be on the moon and on TV at the same time. It was so confusing to me. So I spent the rest of my life trying to reconcile that. And I just got obsessed with science and, you know, television or, you know, the visual image and trying to recreate that. And obviously films like Star Wars were great and very enjoyable. It's like, how did they do that? I needed to know how it was made. And I always had cameras in my hands anyway. I was obsessed with things like lenses and filming things. And it just blended. It just became a natural extension of who I was. I'm just so, I just think of sci-fi every day and night. I'm always dreaming of another movie. It, 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 there's not a day goes by where I don't think about, you know, the next film or what I'm gonna do in the next film or I develop the storyline or, or something for the upcoming movie. I can't not do that. I miss the science fiction that's really science fiction adventure, you know, where there's a developing storyline where I guess something like Game of Thrones is, is a great example of a, of a great production or a great, you know, story or, or an adventure because it breaks all the rules, and, but it takes the character, the viewer on a journey. You go somewhere with that. Um, and I wish people were doing something like Game of Thrones in outer space. I think a lot of television has ob obviously been made for the money and I can't name those shows because they're still good shows, but it's not what I want to see, you know, and I miss, I miss the, um, you know, the real science sometimes, and I miss the adventure, and I miss the, the love of character. And I mean, you know, we, we, we saw some of this in like Star Trek Next Generation, there was a point where those characters were really hitting off each other really well, and that's when it got really good. I think the audience are clever. I think when, when you watch a show, you can smell if it's something made from the heart or if it's made from the pocketbook. But you can kind of tell that, you know, this, this film, this TV show is made by a committee and they're just worried about the marketing aspect, but they're not thinking about the, 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 the relationships of the people and how the people relate to each other. And you can see that very clearly. And of course they'll say, well, you know, blah, blah, we're paying for it, we should do blah, blah, blah. And I get it, you know, yes, they are paying for it. But often because they're pushing the dollar so hard, they lose sight of what, what people want to see. That's why Firefly was so successful, because they took the risks. And Star Wars at the time was a very big risk. They all expected it. Everybody expected Star Wars to be a flop. Nobody sat there and said, this is gonna be the greatest film ever made. And the reason for that is, you know, George Lucas took a risk. And, you know, Gene Roddenberry, you know, took a risk. I believe he took a big risk and he pushed his vision. We don't always have those people now, we have committees. People are always complaining there's not enough good sci-fi on television. They need to do something about it. So I think now's the point for people to step up and say, okay, we genuinely want to see some good science fiction made. And we want people to invest in us because what we're doing 
is legitimate and real. And to be on the, the ground floor of this is, is a really great honor. Imagine you were the first person who said, I believe in Star Trek. And look where it went, you know, 20 years later. Imagine that feeling 20 years time if Nobility was, was you know, the great science fiction show of the 21st century. And you can say, yeah, I was one of the first people on board there. Thank you.